There comes a time in every Spring Boot developer's life where they've got to upload a file to the server. And since you're watching this video, obviously that time has come. Now, don't worry. It's actually a remarkably simple process, even though it may sound intimidating on the surface. And if you give me just a few minutes of your time, I'm going to step you right through it. Now, before I get started, I just want to say that there's typically two approaches to doing file uploads in Spring. One is to use a RESTful API, which we're going to do in this tutorial. Another is to use WebMVC, which I've got another tutorial on as well. So if that's the approach you want to do, check that one out. But in this tutorial, we're going to create a Spring Boot file uploader using Spring Web and RESTful API and we're going to test it with Swagger. And if you haven't used Swagger yet, you really should. And that's probably the biggest payoff in this tutorial. But before we get to that payoff, we've got to create a Spring Boot project that's going to support our file uploader. And that is what we're going to do next. Step one is to create a Spring Boot project in your IDE of choice. You can use the expensive IntelliJ. You can use the free VS Code. I've got Eclipse here and I know what you're thinking. It's a boomer IDE, but I like it. It's free. It's open source and it works for me. But use whatever IDE you want. I'm going to create a project here. I'm just going to call it RESTful file upload and com mcnz spring upload will be part of the gav that all looks like standard stuff what's important is how we create that spring palm file or gradle build file if gradle is what you're into now by the way i do apologize to all of you java vampires out there who are upset by the light mode i will create some intellij videos in dark mode in the future but Hopefully the photons hurting your eyes is worth the reward you're going to get by the end of this video. Now, what do we have to add here? I guess we have to add Spring Web. I want to do this restfully. And so Spring Web will give me access to those REST APIs. I always like to add Spring Boot Dev Tools as well. Now, I promised you we would add Open API or we would add Swagger. And you know, you can't do that from the Spring Boot initializer. So we're going to have to make some edits to our POM file after this project is created. But let's get that started up there. Let's open up that project as Eclipse starts thinking about whether it actually wants to build this Maven project or not. You can see the little progress window in the bottom right hand corner there. It looks like it's made its decision. It's going to support Spring Boot in our file uploader. I'm going to open up this POM file. It could be a Gradle build file if that's your uh, proclivity. Here I'm looking at all of the dependencies. One thing I don't have is the dependency for Swagger, which I'm going to add in right there. Control Shift F makes that look handsome. And as you can see, it says org.spring doc. That's not org.spring framework. And it's a reference to the open API starter, which will give us swagger support. That's going to make testing all of our RESTful APIs, including the file uploader, a whole heck of a lot easier. So if you're doing RESTful web development, you're going to want to start adding that to every single project that you create. OK, I'm going to close that POM file there. You know, sometimes after I've added something to a POM file, I just like to do a, a run as Maven install. That just forces all of those libraries that might be part of a, a different package to be pulled down. So you'll see a bunch of garble there in that console window about pulling in files and anyways that's good that just makes me feel a little bit better yes downloading from maven central there okay with that done i'm going to mosey on over into our basic spring boot application file now people that are more handsome than me will usually create a second separate class for their controller class for their rest controller that's a good practice. For tutorials, sometimes it's nice to just have everything together in one spot. So I'm actually going to leverage this Spring Boot application file that gets created for us and decorate this with the REST controller annotation. Control S, Control Shift O, Control S again, 
and it looks like we now have access to this REST controller. So some of the REST APIs that we want in this application, we can put right into this one file. Again, makes sense to, to have multiple files, right? Put your REST APIs in a, a separate file, but keeping things simple in a tutorial is sometimes a prudent thing to do. Now, what do we want to do? We want to handle posts from a client that tries to post, tries to push up a file from a client machine. We first need to create a method. I'm going to create a, a method. It's going to return a response entity. Now that's somewhat advanced, right? Like that's this part of the API. It's going to make it a bit easier to send response codes to the client along with JSON or, or any other data. So it's a it's sort of a best practice for building your RESTful APIs. Okay, so I'm going to return a response entity from this method. And the method is just going to be called handle file upload. And it's not that advanced. It's just, I mean, a lot of tutorials will just return a string. Um, and uh, that's a little bit, uh, a little bit more intense than returning a string, but it all works. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to get sent uh, as part of a request parameter, a file. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say, you know what, part of that request is going to include a file named file. We'll just call it file there. And it's going to be of type multi part file. And so I'll say, you know, this, this method here, when it runs, somebody's going to be sending a file to the server, it's going to be part of that request. So it's going to come through as a request parameter. And the file is going to be a multi-part file. That request parameter is not going to be a text string. It's not going to be a query parameter. It's actually going to be a file. And multi-part file is the, the type that gets associated with a file upload. Okay, so I got to open that method. I got to close that method. And I got to put some guts into this method. So what do we want to do here? Well, let's get the name of the file that was uploaded because we want to save the file to the server according to the name that it has. So we'll say string file name equals file dot get original file name. So that just gets the original file name. Now it's not a minus there. It's actually an equal sign. So that might keep us honest. And do you see that red X there? If you see that red X on line 12, you need to get your eyes checked because that's a white X on a red background. But uh, right now, the problem that I have is the fact that I haven't organized my import. So I just clicked control shift. Oh, my imports all appeared. The other error that I've got right now is that this method, according to line 14, returns a response entity and we're not returning one yet. So we, we're going to have to get to that in just a second. Let me open up the screen here. So I got a little bit more real estate. And what exactly do I want to do here? Well, I want to take this file and I want to save the file that's come in here into a folder. I'm, I'm on windows and it's just going to be C upload. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to say file dot transfer to, and I said, I'm going to try this. It's a little foreshadowing. I like to use a lot of of literary techniques in these tutorials. And I'm going to transfer it to C upload. So I'm going to create a new file object. And I'm going to point that file object to the uploads folder. And after I point it to that uploads folder, what I want to do is I want to add in the file name, right? So I got the file name there. And it looks like find name. It's file name. You got to spell things correctly. Of course, looks like I got a, uh, do you see that red X there on line 18? I'm just trolling. Yeah. I got to organize my imports, make sure it's java.io.file right there. And that gets me closer to complete. And so what I've done is I've got the file in, I've grabbed the name of the file, and now I'm going to create uh, a new file object in the C uploads file name folder, C uploads folder, and the file will have the same name as the file as it comes in. So that will push that file into this folder. And when this is done, now this should, but it won't <laughs> get rid of the error. And when I'm done, I want to return a new response entity, response entity that just says everything went A 
okay. So let's like file uploaded successfully. And boy, do I hate the auto type ahead. So as I said, this was, was going to come close to working, but it's not quite working. And the reason why it's not quite working is because that file.transfer2 can throw an IO exception. And as you, anytime that you're working with files, input, output, you always got to worry about that IO exception. So I got to put that in a try catch block. Actually, my bank called me up with an IO exception the other day. They said, I owe money on my mortgage. I owe money on my car payment. I owe money on my line of credit. So I'm very familiar with IO exceptions. Now, one of the little tricks here, people always like it when I do this. I'm just going to say uh, surround with a try catch block. And that throws the good old try catch block in there. I'm going to make this succinct, succinct exception. I'll just say catch exception E. And let's make it look nice and handsome. And if there is an exception, rather than printing out the stack trace, I'm just going to say I'm going to return a response entity whose status is HTTP status dot internal server error. And that almost gets me there. I got to build that thing. And there we go. And I think you got to spell things correctly. This is one of the things I don't like about Spring and Java that they force you to spell things correctly. And I'm hoping they're going to improve that, fix that in a future release. But this gets us very close. As you can see, the, the idea here is we've got a method. This method is going to get a file coming into it. And the file, when the client sends it to the server, it's going to send it to the server with the name file. That's where that name file on line 18 comes from. On the web request that comes in, the multi-part file that comes in is actually going to have the name file associated with it. We're going to grab the name of the file. We're going to move that file into the uploads folder on our local system. And then we're going to send a response code that says, hey, everything worked just fine. Now, there is a little razzle dazzle that's needed here. To indicate that this method will handle a post invocation, we have to put the requisite post mapping on it. Now, that post mapping, control shift O to organize those imports, that post mapping has got to have a couple of pieces of information in it. One is the path. And of course, anybody that comes to this is going to be coming to this on localhost 8080 slash upload. So that is the path. And the other thing is, this is going to consume a special media type. And that media type is multi-part form data. I'm going to type in multi-part form data value as the consumption type. Make sure that I've got everything set up properly. It's consumes, not just consumes. So a little underscore there, squiggle, keep it be honest. But right now that sets me up nicely to have my upload method run. We're going to handle requests on slash upload. We're going to take multi-part form data. We're going to take the file that's sent to us that's got the name file, and we're going to store it into that uploads folder. Now, let's see if we can actually run this application. I'm going to right click and say run as a Spring Boot application. That should bring the console up. Let's take a look at that, see if there's any references to 8080 in there, the port that we're running on. I do see a couple there. Now we did install Swagger, so we should be able to test this with Swagger. Once again, just a little reminder, we did add that into our POM file, a little reference to the Spring Doc Open API Starter Web NVC. And with that enabled, we should be able to mosey on over to localhost 8080 slash swagger ui slash index.html. That now gives us a link to our post operation. Let's take a look at that. It says this needs a file. I think I can click on try it out. 
It then says choose file and which file do I want? I'll head over to my downloads folder and I'm going to take a look here and I see that I've got a, ooh, a link to my book, which is coming out. By the way, if you want to win a free copy, I'll be doing raffles for people that sign up to my newsletter. So if you're interested in getting a, maybe winning a free copy there, you can choose that. I'm going to click execute. Well, it says that everything worked well. It seems that I do have a, a message that says the file was uploaded successfully. But me, you know where I'm from. I'm from Missouri. I like to be shown things. And look at that. Boom. There is that uploads folder and there is that hibernate made easy book now i can do this all day long i can come back over here i can reset that i can cancel i can say try it out again i'm going to click choose another file just in case you don't believe me oh there's a subscribe now button and that's not a bad thing to do so maybe like subscribe leave a comment follow me on twitter again i'm going to click execute it indicates that, hey, everything went swimmingly down in the responses. And if we take a look at this uploads folder, ooh, it is not there. So let's go over here. Maybe we have to go over and come back. It's just missing a little refresh. When I refresh the file, indeed, it was there. So there you go. That is how easy it is to create a file uploader in Spring Boot and test all of that code out in Swagger. As I said before, if uh, you're creating a, a RESTful web application, make sure you got Swagger installed there. And if you're learning about Spring, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel.